Has this ever happened to you? Why do guys send dick pics? I don't think I have ever met a girl who was like, you know what, yeah, I asked for one. Like, because no one does that, we don't want to see it. It isn't kind, it shows a lack of imagination, and never seems to work. But what if I told you that despite this, there's a hidden reason why men send unsolicited dick pics? What if I told you that Microsoft had worked this all out a decade ago, before the modern day renaissance in penis portraits? And what if I told you that internet scammers had worked out the hidden economics of sending dick pics before even Microsoft? In June 2012, Microsoft published a short paper on cybersecurity. This isn't remarkable in itself, but the truths that it described would prove pivotal in understanding some of the world's most pressing problems. It was called, Why do Nigerian scammers say they are from Nigeria? And uses multiple mathematical methods to map out the means and incentives for internet scammers. And it tells us an important but hidden secret. You might think that using the laziest, most obvious backstory around is just the scammers being lazy or incompetent, but you'd be wrong. It's not a disadvantage to claim to be from Nigeria, but a huge advantage. And to understand this advantage, we're going to need to take a quick look at the world of medicine. Look at this map. There are 1,000 dots on it, 990 blue and 10 red. These 10 red dots represent people with a rare disease. Everyone else, the blue dots, is healthy. Your job as a doctor is to identify the people with that rare disease so you can treat it and save them. But here's where things get difficult really difficult. The usual answer to this problem is testing for the disease, but testing the entire population throws up a strange result. Let's say you have a fairly accurate test to detect the disease, one that's 98% effective. 98% is pretty accurate, but in real life it's still not accurate enough to be useful. If we perform this test on the entire population, something really weird happens. The test correctly identifies all 10 of the red dots, the people who have the disease, but it also incorrectly identifies 20 of the blue dots. And by the end of the process, what do we see? Two thirds of all the positives are false positives, wasting valuable time, effort and medicine if we want to treat them. And if you think that sounds difficult to deal with, just wait until you hear how this problem affects internet scammers. Scammers typically face the exact same problem, but hundreds of times worse. The proportion of people who are gullible enough to get scammed over the internet is far smaller. We're not talking 10 in 1,000, we're talking 1 in 10,000. And when you have that few people representing the true positives, the amount of false positives, gullible people who aren't quite gullible enough to get scammed, the amount of effort you have to go through to find the right victim is colossal. And that's where the Nigerian Prince story comes in so useful. By using the most obvious, overused story to try and scam people, the only people who actually reply are those so gullible that they would actually end up getting scammed. It turns out that the easiest people to scam on the internet are people who've never heard of internet scamming before. Who knew? And if you keep watching, I'll tell you exactly how to make sure that internet scammers can never scam a single person ever again. The question is, what does this all have to do with sending unwanted dick pics? We've seen how both doctors and scammers encounter the problem of false positives. So here's a truth that may shock you to your core. That men who send unsolicited dick pics really aren't that attractive. Truly, the statistics they face for the proportion of people who would want to sleep with them would make an internet scammer's self-esteem drop through the floor. And so, by using the example of the internet scammer claiming to be from Nigeria, we can look at the sending of an unsolicited dick pic and come to the truth. And it's simple. If you're repulsed, it's working. If you were never going to be interested, the man sending the image is incentivized to find that out as soon as possible. The penis portrait achieves exactly that. Uninterested parties will quickly react with disgust and rejection. Just as internet scammers claim to be from Nigeria to ensure that only the most naive of victims reply, so too do men sending unwanted penis portraits quickly find out if the recipient is interested or not.
Now, before we go on, let me be clear. I do not condone the unsolicited sending of explicit images. It's invasive, cruel, and violates consent. If somebody asks you for one, that's fine, but sending them non-consensually is rude and inconsiderate. Nor do I wish to rag on people who have received a dick pic and proceeded with the conversation. But just as we can study hamsters and primates to learn how they respond to incentives, so too can we study the men who send unwanted penis portraits to learn more about their incentives. They're sending these messages again and again and again, and getting rejected again and again and again. That doesn't sound at all fun, so why do they persist? Now, I'm not claiming that every man who sends unwanted dick pics has a PhD in microeconomics and applied mathematics, but there are other reasons why this strategy is used. For one, we can take the traditional concept of a sales funnel. In the world of selling stuff, the idea goes that if you draw out the numbers of people still engaged at each layer of the selling process, you get an inverted pyramid. At the top are people who are aware of your product, and the further down you go, the closer they get to buying it. At each level, you lose people, as it turns out that they don't want your product for whatever reason. Conventional wisdom tells us that in order to double the number of sales you make, you have to double either the amount of people aware of your product, for example, by marketing campaigns, or double the conversion rate of people going through that funnel. To go back to our doctor analogy, by testing more people, we can find more true positives. Sending unwanted nude images offers the benefit of being low cost. You can message a large number of people this way, thus increasing the size of your sales funnel. It's the equivalent of a mass media marketing campaign. But Microsoft also left us with one final cherry on the cake that the less likely to attract a partner you are, the better it is to send dick pics. They didn't put it quite that way. I'll put their exact words on the screen. But what this tells us is that as the proportion of suitable partners decreases, the costs of false positives increase exponentially. Hence the usefulness of a method that helps eliminate these false positives. So to recap what we've learned so far, We've seen how the problem of false positives occurs across medicine, scamming, and other fields. We've also identified that sending unwanted nude images helps eliminate the problem of false positives, and is also a viable technique for increasing the size of your sales funnel. But what have we learnt from all this? We've seen that however disgusting this behaviour is, there are some cruel statistics and incentives that make it worthwhile for some. However, a better question to ask is this. What can we do as a society if we want to reduce the amount of unsolicited nude images we receive? And once again, Microsoft has the answer. We talk to the men who send us dick pics and waste their time and effort. The sum of effort defense in this case means that all of us should waste the time of people sending us unwanted nude images, and also waste the time of scam artists sending us scam emails. Because by doing so, we ensure that it is no longer a worthwhile technique that they can use to find potential victims. But finally, let's get to the question actually asked by the title of this video. What does this all tell us about the men who send unsolicited dick pics? Firstly, it tells you about their perspective. They have ceased to think about you as a person. To them, you are merely statistics. But it also demonstrates a wider lack of compassion. This strategy only works if you're able to message large numbers of people, such are the statistics involved, and compassion will only stop you from achieving that. If we were to go further, we could possibly identify cripplingly low self-esteem, a belief or perhaps a recognition that your personal attributes are insufficient in the conventional game of dating to be successful. But these men know that sometimes simply being there and available is enough. No further personal qualities are required. It represents more of a statement of belief in the sales funnel than it does in their own funnel. If you are or have been the kind of person to send unwanted explicit images, then know this. The statistics you face are indeed cruel. But that doesn't mean that you have to be cruel as well. If you're interested in an alternative but effective means for finding a partner, they do exist. But that might be a subject for another video. Comment below to let me know if you're interested. If you enjoyed this unconventional economics essay, please do subscribe for more. It's a new channel, so it really helps me out. 
This has been Bonobo Economicus. See you in the next one.